Project Aerospace, OBAP, and FedEx are making dreams come true for students like me, and one day I plan on being an air traffic controller. I'm Captain Albert Glenn, the former chairman of the board of the Organization of Black Airline Pilots, also known as OBAC. Aerospace Professionals in School is a program designed with you in mind. We want you to be successful, but we also understand that success does not come by luck. You need to be prepared, set goals, and seize the opportunity. I had no idea when I was in school that I'd be a FedEx MD-11 pilot traveling all around the world. The seeds of what I could be were planted by professionals like the ones you'll be introduced to today. These professionals will tell you what it took for them to be successful and why they enjoy their jobs today. Aviation is so dynamic now. I love being a pilot. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It takes some nerve to be in aviation. I love it. Oh, I love, I love the mechanic. I love being around, the, uh, being around the airplanes. When I get to go out and work with the pilots, work on the airplanes, it's just a different world. It's very nice. I mean, it's just fun. I got to fly around the world several times over. Flying the aircraft is very fun. When I was your age, my parents gave me what I now call my five building blocks for success. I set goals, took on a positive attitude, established good work habits, and learned from my role models and mentors and became an overachiever in just about everything I set out to do. FedEx is proud to join with the Organization of Black Airline Pilots in bringing Project Aerospace to schools, exposing you to careers in aviation. We theme this project Cradle to Career. I was intrigued with aviation from a kid. I've always liked looking at airplanes. Uh, coincidentally enough, I lived right across the street from this airport as a child. Um, when the opportunity arose, the Marine Corps told me they could make me an air traffic controller. I jumped on it. Ramp tower control, we basically deal with um, private carriers on the ground. For instance, typically I will only speak with FedEx airplanes or uh, Air National Guard airplanes and only on the ground. We don't give command and control instructions to aircraft that are in flight. The other tower, Memphis Tower, they give command and control air to uh, aircraft that are in flight and on the ground. I'm a part of the avionics group and um, we basically work with um, any of the avionic components that would that are housed in the cockpit so some of the things that you can see behind me for example are the EFBs and those are used so that pilots will have easy access to their manuals and different applications that they need to um, better their flights. Well, my mom's a teacher so at first I thought teaching was going to be what I went into just because it's what she did but then as I got older I learned that math and science were my two favorite subjects and um, also growing up, I would do a lot of playing with different electronics around the house, always trying to fix things when they broke. So from there, I was like, okay, this is definitely, I definitely want to do something in electronics. And then my mom started to notice, and when I got into junior high and high school, she started sending me to different engineering programs and technology programs, and from there, it just stuck. I was like, okay, engineering is definitely what I want to do. Once I get out there and you prove that you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, the age, being a woman, being black, it doesn't even matter. I love it as far as when I'm walking through the airport and someone stopped me and just come up and shake my hand because they've never seen an African American pilot, whether it be a kid or even an adult. I feel really proud. I didn't always want to be a pilot, although that was always, you know, everybody expected. But I, I didn't have it all together back then. I, I thought maybe another career choice, but I always liked it. I enjoyed doing it, and my father always took me out flying. So I've been around it forever, you know. I guess it's kind of one of those things, once you're around it, kind of go, oh, nah, I don't think so. But as I got older, I started realizing just how much I really loved aviation and how much I enjoyed it and how much I really wanted to do that every day that I got up and went to work. I got in aviation around 14 years old, so I started asking questions every chance I got about what would it take to be a pilot. My father was a pilot, so I've been around aviation my whole life. And uh, as, as I got older, I guess, 
one of the most, one of the best uh, achievements I saw was my mentorship program through OBAP and the ACE Camp. Um, it's he that's held every year at FedEx. And I had the opportunity not only just to see about aviation as flying, but also every career opportunity that's involved in aviation. And I got my wings in the Marine Corps and I flew C-130s. And I did it that for approximately 10 years. I, not only did I go through the OBAP ACE Camp and I've been mentored, but I've been able to go back and mentor other kids and see those kids go on to be airline pilots, going to be in the uh, Navy or other branches of the armed services. So a lot of these children are hearing it for the first time and when they see me or someone else come up, they're like, wow, you know what, I can do this. Aviation today is a very wonderful uh, field. It uh, has a lot of lucrative opportunities. 50, 40, 30, 20. I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. I have the be I'm at the best company, I have the best job, and I get to see all the entire world. And I couldn't imagine another job. Sometimes I think about that and I go, what could I do? I couldn't imagine not being able to go to Paris or go to India and see the different parts of the world. This is it's just the greatest thing. I came from France where I always wanted to be a pilot, so this is the reason why I left France to uh, come to the United States when I was about 18 years old. I, uh, I got a bachelor in aviation management as well as um, some uh, flight training to become a flight instructor. I worked as a flight instructor for a while, got a master's degree in aviation safety, and uh, ended up in Memphis um, looking for a job. I initially got uh, into aviation safety. I uh, worked for a few months in aviation safety for FedEx and then transitioned here at MOCC where uh, I'm, uh, I'm able to actually use my pilot background uh, with all the multitasking that we have uh, around here. I maintain and uh, watch over our aircraft, the fleet of trunk aircraft, to number about 354 aircraft in our, our company. And what I do is I maintain and make sure that we keep legal fitness. We keep them safe, legal, and reliable safe meaning that we maintain the maintenance of the aircraft according to the regulations of the FAA and our departmental requirements. And then legal would be is regulatory compliance and safe certainly is monitoring that we do our maintenance according to what is uh, scripted by the uh, manufacturer. I'm dividing my job between two main uh, area. The first area is the riding side and uh, I'm taking care of the MD-10, the DC-10 and the MD-11 which is a Douglas fleet here at FedEx. I'm pretty much uh, in charge of uh, uh, looking where those airplanes go. And the other side is more the maintenance side, and I'm taking care of the same airplane, making sure we are making good assignment maintenance-wise, making sure we have the tooling required and the manpower required. This program uh, gives me kind of a snapshot of where all my airplanes are in the world at, uh, at this time, as well as for the next few uh, days, actually two weeks. So by looking at that screen, which looks like a big puzzle right now, you see different colors and everything is color-coded. And I know which station we're looking at, which flight number we're looking at. And uh, it looks really overwhelming, but uh, once you have it done, this is a wonderful tool. It was a field that I looked at that there weren't a lot of minorities in at the time. And every day that I'm here, and each time I move up in position, it gives me the opportunity to provide for those that are prepared for the position. It's uh, always exciting. There's always something new coming up. Uh, I'm really uh, glad I have that uh, multitasking uh, background being a pilot because some days you are talking on the phone, there's uh, another phone ringing, some people are talking to you, you're talking to Europe, Asia, US. So it's, uh, you're definitely not bored. I dispatch airplanes for FedEx. I've been doing that for approximately 11 years. Basically, it's um, doing the flight plans. Um, every commercial airplane that you see flying in the sky has a flight plan associated with it. There's people on the ground that are monitoring that flight, tell the crew members um, how to get to where they're going, uh, how high to fly, what kind of payload, um, cargo, how many passengers are gonna be on the airplane, we do the performance, um, we flight follow, we communicate with the crew members while they're in the air, and we make sure that they leave and arrive safely. I became interested in aviation when I was a young child. 
We deal with multi-million dollar airplanes, multi-million dollar packages. Uh, lives are at stake. Um, it's a very time critical, very safety sensitive job. You leave your work feeling like you've done something. You've made an impact on the world or, or what we do. There's not a whole lot of women in, in, in this career field, which is also very exciting for me. Um, a lot, there's been a few women before me that have opened the door, so to speak, um, and there's going to be a lot more after me, which I'm very proud of. It is the most different and unique thing I've ever done. Uh, and from a woman's perspective, I didn't know anything about aircraft or that I had the capacity to even work on them. And once you kind of figured out that you could, man, it's been awesome. I want to fly airplanes, but I had corrective vision, so I couldn't. Uh, so they had some job titles that came up that were these long names that I didn't know what they meant. So I picked one and it was an aircraft mechanic. And the next thing I knew, I was uh, in uh, sunny Southern California at March Air Force Base, working on KC-10 aircraft. And I got there and finished up Memphis Air Votech in 85 and earned my AMP license, airframes and power plant certificate. And two months later down the line, I joined FedEx aircraft mechanics ranks and it's been good ever since. 23 years that I've been doing this, and today I love these airplanes just as much as I did when I first started working on them. I've been as far as France, temporary, uh, temporary assignments in France, in Europe, got a chance to see a lot of great things over there, uh, and it's been, it's been good. You need to get an education and be a very well-rounded individual. If you're capable of thinking and you just want to stretch your imaginations and your abilities, aviation is certainly a place to do it. Well, and I can tell you how important it is to uh, learn how to speak good English. Don't be afraid to try things new. Educate yourself. Study, stay in school, stay focused. And then you're going to have to be flexible. Listening skills primarily, you know, thinking skills, thinking outside the box, and being a self-starter, self-motivator certainly helps. It's just, it's just fascinating. You just wonder how in the world can all of that metal with thousands and thousands of pounds of fuel and freight, how can it just, that airplane just still take off just like it's, I mean, just like it's a bird, you know? It's, it's, it's fascinating, still, today. Now that you've heard from the experts, take advantage of Project Aerospace and make it work for you.